Jennifer. I'm here at California Citrus State Historic Park. Today I'd like to talk to you about a quintessential part of the Southern California image and its history and how it relates specifically to the citrus industry. Now if I were to ask you to pick a single kind of tree that you think best represents Southern California, what do you think you might pick? If you are like me, or if you're really good at picking up on hints in the background, you might guess palm trees. Makes sense. They're really cool looking. They stand really tall and impressive, really stand out from the background, and they're an important part of the California dream idea. However, it turns out that most of the palm trees that you see in Southern California are not original to the area. Now there are palm trees that are native to the Palm Springs and Palm Desert area and they're this kind, the, the tall skinny ones with the fronds that look like fans. So these are native but most of the other palm trees that you see in the area are not. And so you may wonder, well how did so many of them end up here? Why are they everywhere? In the late 1800s and the early 1900s there was quite a lot of land in Southern California that folks wanted to sell. They also wanted to bring people here as tourists. And so a bunch of folks banded together. We're talking like newspaper editors and writers, advertisers, landowners, uh, developers. They banded together and tried to create this image of Southern California as this oasis, a forever vacation spot, exotic. And they brought in plants like palm trees to boost that image. Um, I will leave it to you to decide whether you think it's fair to say that California is this cool exotic place when you're using plants that aren't actually from here. Like I said, I will leave that to you. Now in general when you see palm trees out and about, they're being used ornamentally, which just means that they're being used for their appearance rather than for any practical purposes. But in the citrus industry in particular, palm trees had several important uses. Now behind me, what you see are rows and rows and rows of Washington Naval orange trees. If you've seen some of our other videos, you know that Washington Navels really put Riverside on the map. By the year 1895, Riverside was one of the wealthiest nations in the country. It was actually, sorry, the wealthiest nation in the country per capita, which just means per person. And that was because of the citrus industry. This area ran on the citrus industry. And if, if there were a problem with the crop one year, that could be devastating. So this was really important to protect the groves. One major threat that they had to deal with was frost. We don't think of that so often now. But of course we know that if it's very cold outside, water freezes. Well, if you take a look inside citrus fruit, it's nice and juicy, that's why we like it, but that's because it has a high water content, and so if it freezes, the orange does not turn into a popsicle, unfortunately. Um, when it thaws, it's very mushy and gross, and nobody's going to want to buy it or eat it. And if it gets cold enough, the trees themselves can actually die. So frost was a major problem. They developed other methods of dealing with frost later on. If you watch our video on smudge pots with uh, Mr. Nick, that's pretty cool. I recommend you check it out. But another way that they tried to control uh, frost or prevent frost was to pre was to plant, excuse me, uh, palm trees, especially palmettos, which are just shorter, right? Doing that kind of breaks up the wind. Just like if you're outside and there's really cold wind blowing on you and there's nothing breaking it up and it's just right onto you, that's very, it gets very cold, right? If there's something breaking up that wind, it prevents the tree or you from freezing. And so that's one use that they sometimes use uh, palm trees for. However, uh, the part that I think is really cool is that they use them as a navigational aid. Now, um, see these rows and rows and rows of navel trees in the 1800s, early 1900s, they were growing trees that could easily reach 25 feet tall. Generally now they try to keep them shorter because who wants to climb 25 feet 
to get the fruit that you'd like to sell. That's a lot of work. But like I said, they could be 25 feet tall. Now I'm five foot three. So 25 feet tall is nearly five of me. Imagine me walking out in all those rows of navel oranges. All the trees look the same and they're five of me tall. Am I going to see my way in or out of the grove very easily? No. Am I going to get lost easily? Yes, absolutely. That's no fun. And so if you take a look upward a little from all of the uh, navel orange trees, you'll see that um, the one thing really stands out above the rest and that's the palm trees. And so they actually use the palm trees as a map in the sky. You'd be walking around in the grove, take a look up and that can tell you where you need to go. So you see the very tall thin ones behind me and how they kind of form a wave? That's because they're following a trail through the park. Sometimes they would build the palm trees leading up to the grove owner's home in part because it looked fancy and exotic but again, also so that you could find where you needed to go. There's another way that they use the palm trees. Now, if you look out on uh, right here where there's this white building here, look up just a little bit from there. There are two rows of palm trees, a different kind of palm tree that's got a much thicker trunk. They don't grow as tall. And they're using those to define our property line. Basically saying, my property ends here, your property ends there. And uh, again, it's important to not get lost. It's important to not wander on to somebody else's property. And so they would use the palm trees for that as well. What I think is really cool about this is that you see there's something that we kind of take for granted, right? We don't even think about it. We just think, oh yeah, palm trees are just part of Southern California. But really when you learn more about the history, you realize that it wasn't necessarily always going to be that way, right? Somebody did that on purpose, but now it's just part of our daily lives. I think that those hidden stories like that are really interesting and they tell us a lot about who we are and where things come from. So thank you for stopping by today.